Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. And the snow has turned to rain behind me, so I'll film this one on the deck again. And in today's episode, a topic that everyone asks about, and these are five ways that you can earn money while you're traveling, while you're on the road. So these are five things that I've experimented with and I know a little bit about from my personal experience, but also these are things I've learned from other people who are driving around the world. So money is quickly a topic of conversation and we're always swapping ideas and trying new things. So it's really great you can learn from other overlanders. So here in this video, I'll run through five things Although they're numbered one through five, it doesn't mean that number one is the best and number five is the worst. As I discuss each item, I'll give you a little rundown on how successful it's been for me and the other people I've spoken to and whether or not I really recommend it. So let's get right into it. Five ways that you can earn money while you're overlanding around the world. So the first way that I see people making money is to rent out their house while they're driving around the world. So if you've already been paying into a mortgage for quite a few years, chances are you can rent out your house for more than your monthly payments are now. So if you do that, that excess money can go into your travel fund. And this doesn't apply to me, I don't own a house, but I met many overlanders driving around the world who are doing this. And this is a really great one. So they're getting like $1,000 a month or something. So if they have an expensive vehicle repair, all they need to do is stay in one place for three or four months and their bank account goes up because when you stay still, you don't spend much money as an overlander and then they can sort of get moving again. So this is a really nice passive income strategy. Obviously only applies if you already own a house and have already been paying it off, but certainly can work really, really well to earn money without you really having to do any work. Another idea that comes up all the time is to take other people with you while you're overlanding. So there are always backpackers getting around in the world and they're always looking for a ride from A to B, especially if you're going somewhere that isn't serviced by local buses or buses that sort of cater to other backpackers. And this idea, I've tried it myself, it doesn't really work to actually make money because backpackers, they're always on a tight budget. They're not really gonna pay you any more than they would pay a bus service to take them somewhere. And chances are that isn't even going to cover your fuel to drive from A to B. So this does help offset fuel costs. When I've had backpackers with me, normally we just split the gas cost. So it basically makes it half price for me. Of course, my bank account is still going down because I'm still spending money on gas, but I'm spending less money. And actually I've spent a lot of time thinking about this and the sailing world, they have a huge advantage here. They have these websites. There's one called Cruise Seekers. There's another one called Find a Crew. And these are groups of people set up where you can volunteer to go on a sailboat that's going somewhere around the world. And there's different levels. If you wanna work really hard on the boat and be part of the crew, potentially you're just getting the trip for free. But if you just wanna be a tourist and laze around all day, you're getting sailed, you do nothing, you pay for the trip. So that means the owner of the sailboat actually makes money or you know helps offset the trip costs because they're taking tourists with them. And so I've always wondered why someone doesn't make an app like this for overlanding. I think it could work really well. Uh, it's not something that I'm gonna do. I've got too many things on my plate. But this idea that you could take other people with you, yes, I think it can help offset fuel costs, but it's probably not gonna help you actually earn money and have your bank account go up. The next way that I've seen people earn money on the road is simply to work remotely for your existing job. So before you leave home, chances are you've got a job and you're trying to save money. If you can organize with your boss to work remotely, maybe it's just for a few hours a week, maybe it's a couple of days a week, this can obviously work really well. And the internet is good enough now in basically every country in the world. If you need to dial into a conference call or obviously download documents and upload things, you can do that from essentially anywhere in the world. Of course, this only works for certain types of jobs. It's not something that I've ever been able to make work because I find when a company is paying you, they really wanna like have full access to you. So if they're having a call at two o'clock in the afternoon their time, they expect you to call in no matter what. 
it doesn't really matter if that's the middle of the night for you, or it doesn't really matter if you're trying to cross a border that day, the company wants you to call in. So for me personally, I've never made remote working work to my advantage, but plenty of people do. And it does change the trip a little bit as well. You're not purely on holiday, you're kind of working as you're traveling. But if it works for you and you can find a way for it to be advantageous, absolutely, it's a great way to help make money while you're on the road. Another option that has worked really successfully for me is to write for websites or write for magazines as you're moving around. So this works really well. You know, if you're going up to Alaska or if you're down in Guatemala and you're poking lava with a stick, like these are travel experiences that other people want to have and they want to see your photos and they want to read about it. So you definitely have something that people out there in the world, they want to learn about. And there are websites, there are magazines that will pay you for that content. So if there's any interest, let me know. I'll do a whole other video on how to get published in magazines, but safe to say it's a long road. For, the, for my first trip, Alaska to Argentina, I think I wrote two magazine articles and maybe four or five website articles, and I didn't get paid a cent. You know, I had no experience how to write them. My photographs were quite average. Uh, and so it was a steep learning curve and I had to put in the time and put in the years of effort before I built up a reputation, before some editors got to know me and trust me, and they would actually start to pay me for the articles that I was writing. So this is something you can do, it is very possible, but just remember it's going to take quite a while for it to really pay off and for you to actually start earning money. You know, you can't just go out and snap a couple of photos on your iPhone and say, hey look, I went to Yellowstone National Park and expect to suddenly get paid a thousand dollars for that. That's not super realistic. But if you are doing a huge trip and you put in the time and you develop your photography and you work on your writing and you know, ask editors for feedback. If they don't publish your stuff, try and say, hey, I'd love to work with you guys. What can I do to improve? You know, read other articles written by other travelers and you know, learn from what they're doing, how they have an introduction to their article, kind of a middle piece, which is the meat, and then some sort of summary or recap that ties the whole thing together. These are all skills that took me a long time to learn. And as an engineer, they didn't come naturally, but you can do it and you can make money. Again, I don't make enough money to stop my bank account going down when I'm on the road, but it certainly slows down how quickly my bank account goes down, which is really nice. And then the final way that I wanna discuss with you guys is this idea of getting sponsors to pay for your trip. And you know, this comes up all the time online. And even here on YouTube, I'm getting tons of people say to me, you know, Jeep should be paying you for this, or you should get Land Rover to give you a free vehicle and a gas card. And like, that's really nice. I like that idea. I have to tell you, it's just not reality. You know, there are tons of people out there around the world doing epic trips. And for Jeep or Land Rover to pay someone to do a trip, that's extremely unlikely. That's just not how the world works. In terms of getting other sponsors or sponsors to pay you, it is a very, very long road and it takes a lot of years of building up your brand, building up recognition, building up credibility within the industry. And what I've experienced is it takes a lot of knowledge of marketing to really make this work. So people who have a marketing background, they kind of have a leg up because they understand what companies are looking for. But for me, I really don't understand marketing. I'm not up to speed with it. And so the idea that some company is gonna pay me money, you know, they're looking for a result from me. They want me to help sell their products. And I don't really know how to do that. So in 10 years of doing this, of building my brand, I'm just getting enough credibility in the industry, but it's been a really long road and it's really hard work. So if you've got this idea that some sponsor out there is going to pay you to drive around Africa or you know pay you to go to Alaska, I don't wanna dash your dreams, but I'm going to say that's fairly unrealistic. Just as one example, I know of a company in this industry, uh, they receive 20 sponsorship requests every single day. That's right. 20 different people are hitting them up every single day saying, hey, you should give me free product or you should give me money. And so think about that. If your proposal is competing with 20 others on every day, 
is your proposal really that great? Are they gonna get an enormous amount of marketing exposure from you? Do you have a million followers or do you have your own TV show on Discovery Channel? That's the kind of thing they're looking for if they're actually gonna give you money. So while getting sponsors to pay for your trip sounds great, uh, I've never met anyone in real life doing it. I'm aware of one group on YouTube who did get paid, but that's very, very unlikely. I think for ordinary people, it's not very likely that it's going to happen. So. so what does all of that mean at the end? Well, what it means is that the very vast majority of people out there overlanding around the world, they're doing it on their savings. So they work for years and years and years, just like I've done. They save every penny they possibly can, and then they hit the road and they live on their savings account. Most people who are out there on the road, they don't even try to earn money because they just want to enjoy their trip. And when the trip is over, then they go home and they go back to work. That is by far and away the most common way to pay for a big overlanding trip. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope that answers some questions. Let me know down in the comments if you've got other ideas or other ways that you think can work or have worked for you. I'd be happy to film another video about this. And if this has been helpful, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. New videos come out every single Monday and Thursday and new adventures are definitely in the works. I hope that uh, you can stay safe. I hope you're able to get out on some kind of adventures where you are. And until next time, stay safe and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.